Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again for another video for you guys here today. Getting into it, we're going to start out here with Magic Ruler, Mystical Space Typhoon. A lot of things running around the meta right now for trap magic removal. This is my all time favorite quick play magic card. And it's been going up a little bit in value right now. Unlimited Lightly Play is about $4. And plenty of onesies going around here. But I'm more concerned about the first editions. The first editions jump all the way up to $9, which uh, is kind of expensive. I was getting mine for around like the 5 6 range a long time ago. Um, but this is an old card, it's original print, and for $9. Not too bad. I don't. I don't know. For me personally, I already have several first edition prints, so I don't think I'm gonna get this. But if you guys don't have any, uh, this is a ridiculously old card, and uh, I think it's always interchangeable. It's always gonna be coming in and out. Everyone has their preference for how they want to get rid of things, but for a first edition original print, nine dollars isn't too bad. Moving into drag down to the grave. This card's pretty cheap right now. It's not really seeing much play. It's an extremely powerful card. Sometimes it comes in and out of the meta, swapped throughout decks. Um, it's like $2 right now. $2 for a first edition super rare. This is the highest rarity from one of the infamous Legendary Collection 3, Yugi World. Yugi's World, I'm a very big advent fan of this set. And um, yeah, it's like $2. One here for $2. One here for $1.50, one here for $1.50. So if you can add those onto your shopping carts, why not? This is a really powerful card. I think for $2 for a first edition highest rarity, it's pretty good. Moving into highest rarity into the void, ultimate rare. This is bumped down. You know, with the reprint, it kind of went down a little bit. Sending around $10 for the first edition lightly played ultimate rares. Um, I don't think that's, that's that bad for that. You know, $3, $3 for a play set of this, ultimate rare. Uh, this is a really good card. Again, this is one of those cards that comes in and out for draw power throughout the meta, depending on what decks are popular. I think it's really interchangeable. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it's just an all-around card. So for $10, ultimate rare. It's uh, not too shabby. If you have GOAT tokens, uh, common, they're worth, they're worth a decent amount of money. Um, this one here, the orange is about 8, blue is 7, um, and this yellow one is 5, so and that purple is around 3, or red, reddish purple. Anyway, just kind of wanted to go over that if you have these. I'm not even sure which set these are from, but if you have common tokens, they're worth a couple dollars. Forbidden cards, I love these cards. Chalice is always kind of ridiculously expensive for the ultimates. I mean, it's an ultimate, it looks super awesome. Uh, a little too expensive for me to pick up, maybe when it goes down to around 10 for first edition, I'd buy those, but there's some alternatives, but I want to focus primarily on the Lance. I love this card. I'm a huge anti-meta advent player, and I like swapping this card out, ins and out, for defending some of my stuff. Let's take a look at the first editions. First editions is around $3. Um, <clears throat> that's a little too expensive. I'd get these around two for first editions. I only get the first editions, and I'll get them for two. But I just wanted to kind of point this card out. That's uh, something no one's really looking at, and I think it's a good card to kind of keep your eye on for when it goes down for two. Definitely pick this up. Um, I want to kind of start break off into another series here. This is kind of a Pretty plethora, well diverse mixed market watch slash investment watch, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to go over a few cards that I think have really killer artwork, really, really awesome artwork that I think maybe potentially collectors are starting to buy out some older cards, some not so older cards. But these cards are just, I think they have fantastic artwork, and I think as time goes on, if they get harder to get, as people start to buy them out or whatever have you. Um, these cards are going to be worth a good amount of money. And we can already kind of start to see that with Ultimate Rare, Absolute Power Forces, Ultimate Rare Black, which of the Black Rose this is the Ultimate Rare version, of course, the 
highest rarity. And uh, the unlimited is running about five dollars, but when you get to first edition, it jumps up to almost around eight, around eight dollars. So there's only two pages left. Um, I'll switch over to the ultra really quick so you can see the artwork a little bit better. Really, really killer artwork, and of course, it being an old school ultimate rare, it's hard to get. And uh, depending on what deck you're playing, it, it's kind of, kind of a, a kind of a decent effect in a way. But it's just another spellcaster girl with some killer artwork, and it's an old school ultimate rare. So collectors maybe I, I know I've started collecting this, and uh, the collectors market may shift towards this card to add it in. So that's something to consider. I really would only go for the ultimate rares. The ultra rares are not worth much of anything. Um, even the unlimiteds, as you can see, they're a couple dollars. So um, I would get on this before it gets too late, or at least get a playset just to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, going off that topic, Ga 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 Girl. Uh, this card has been slowly going up a little bit. I think collector's market is kind of shifting over and kind of capturing this card. Uh, there's quite a few listings, but not, you know, you have to go all the way to the second page for first edition. And it's sitting around 350 This they have two of them, so it's not too bad. Under the $5 mark, this is a, a god-awful card, it's it's never really going to see play, I don't think it ever did. This whole archetype uh, was awful, it was never really popular. But just the sheer fact that she kind of looks like Dark Magician Girl, and she's a solo print secret. Oh, well, not a solo print. It came first. Super rare as well. But no one cares about the super rare. You want to get the original print secret first edition. Um, this is just another card that I think for artwork, collector's value, I think it's going to shift over. They're going to start capturing this card. So right now, uh, the cheapest first editions are two of them here for 350 So something to consider. I know I'm definitely looking to invest in this card for artwork collector's value as well. This is kind of something off the spur. This is just me personally. This isn't more of like a mass population uh, collector's market, but for Tardy Orc, I personally love the artwork in this card. This isn't a very good card at all. It's kind of just a random card that, you know, maybe used in like old school beater decks or whatever have you, but I just love the artwork. Uh, there's only a few prints of this, a lot of different commons and stuff, but of course the Secret Rare, the original one from an old school set like Galactic Overlord, um, and it's really cheap right now. It's under a dollar for the first edition prints, and there's quite a few of them actually, um, five pages plus, and pretty much all of them are under a dollar for first editions near mints. So. I, this isn't like a really playable card, but again, I just think the artwork is fantastic, and it's an old school secret. And I mean, I I'm collecting them personally just because they're cheap, and there's not a lot of them. And I think they have cool uh, cool artwork, so it's kind of my personal collection of artwork for that card. Moving on, Injection Fairy Lily, solely the secret rare from the original print Leg Legacy of Darkness. Everyone kind of has known this card has been going up. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. More so for the first edition, of course, like everything else in the Yu-Gi-Oh world. First editions are sitting at almost $23. This card has oh, definitely went up. Um, so I was getting mine around 10s and 11s about, I don't want to say, maybe two years ago. That was kind of the price, like ten, nine dollars, eleven, even to a couple months ago. I actually bought a few out here for about around ten dollar range. Uh, for lightly played first edition, and yeah, it's twenty three dollars right now. So this has always been a collector's card for artwork value, and as time goes on, Legacy of Darkness is one of the original core sets for first generation, and is just probably one of the top artwork cards, female artwork cards in the whole TCG, honestly. It is just, I, you know, I think it's safe to say that it's right up up there with the uh, Dark Magician Girl. Really, really popular card. Really hard to get first edition for the most part and expensive. So, but it's a collector's value card, so that's why it's on this, uh, this in, why it's in this video. So, something to consider. Another one, this is kind of out there. I'm going to kind of go into my own realm here. This is like the White Mexican's realm. 
This is not, not a lot of people are going to understand this. I honestly think, I know Soul Fusion just came out. There's an abundance. There's so many condemned witches out. It's really, really cheap. I personally bought a lot of these myself. Um, but this is a playable card. Not only is this a playable card, this is a really good playable card. You know, it doesn't really have a place in the meta yet. Um, but it's its effect is fantastic. It digs through your deck in special summons. Um, there's a lot of fairy variants out there. And it's always been a popular archetype. Fairy decks have always kind of come in and out of the meta. But this, not only that, not only that's like a playable card and has potential for future play, potentially even in meta play, it has fantastic artwork. Right now it just came out, so it's a solo print secret rare. Um, but I think as we get further and further away, I'm talking about like years, like years from now, when Souls Fusion is like impossible to get, almost. I think this card's going to go up, and I've continuously bought several of these because it's like $2 right now, and it, it's been, it was even cheaper. I was getting it for like a dollar a couple months ago, so it's slowly starting to go up. Not anywhere soon because there's so many because it's such a new set, but this card has fantastic artwork. It's a female card. It's a really just badass, dark-looking card. You know, a lot of the female cards are really cutesy and glittery and shiny, and this is definitely glittery and shiny. But it's just badass and dark and looks really, really sinister and her eyes are all like glowing red and it's it's really good. I mean, this is definitely high on my list for collector's value artwork cards. I think this is a really good deal. And if I was you, I would definitely be stocking up on this card. Moving on, tour guide, of course, one of the infamous uh curl cards here with the artwork. There's to so many prints here. And potentially, you know, maybe if it comes off the ban list, maybe if Burning Abyss get more of their stuff unlocked, they'll see more meta play, whatever have you. It's always been a popular card, relatively expensive. It has a lot of prints, so the prices really, really range. A lot of people like the Duelist Saga. Um, and then there's the Super Rares from the Collector Tins, and like all these are like nothing. The only ones are really worth money, essentially, is the Ultimates, of course, and the Secrets. But... Uh, for collector's value, obviously, yes, you're going to want the ultimates or the secrets, but they're a lot of money. So, I think the super rare and the dual saga are pretty good alternatives. Um, just because, you know, if it gets unlocked on the ban list and just, it's an all around just, it's a good card. Um, I, you know, it's a really pop popular card, people love this card, but, you know, it's safe to say I would definitely, you know, go for the Duelist Saga because it looks really nice and it's really cheap. And the Super is really cheap, too, if you want to go, like, super, super cheap. And, again, I got a thing. I really do like Super Rares um, for certain things. So that's something to look at. But everyone knows. I mean, that's kind of a popular known fact that this is a uh, collector's card for artwork value as well. Something that's not really known, this is another kind of the white Mexican special. This is one thing specifically for me. You won't really find this anywhere else. Ghost Fairy Elphobia. This card is a solo print super rare from Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. It is dirt cheap right now because it's not really playable. I don't think it ever really will be a playable card. It's kind of got a random effect. But it's a psychic win and it it's just the artwork. That's all I'm going to really say. Like, this, uh, the majority of this video is about me explaining about, you know, what could potentially get scarce on resources and eventually not be available. And eventually, when collectors get this card, if it gets picked up to be popular for collector's cards, they'll buy all these out and it'll be a lot expensive than it is right now. Um, specifically, I put the settings for near mint, like, play three or more. This one has three for 25. Uh, 3 for 36, of course, always only exclusively, especially this card being so cheap, only get the first edition print, I promise you. The first edition is the only one, if it ever does go up, it's the only one that's really going to go up. But this is kind of one of those hidden things, this is just me personally. Um, I think the artwork is fantastic, her dress, her heels, the little, like, magic staff, the... Um, I don't even know, like, the Hawk Crow. It just, everything looks badass about this car. It's just a really sinister, dark-looking car. Little, like, magic death trees in the back. I'm just saying, you know, I think kind of probably overran my mouth on this card, but I think this is just a really cheap card that's normally 
pays attention to. I've already bought several myself just because it's so cheap. But I think eventually the collector's market could potentially come to this card just for sure. Artwork alone is just fantastic. Alright, so I'm kind of moving out of the artwork collector's market now into some actual um, cards. Playable cards are actually pretty good. Use your recycling plant from the special edition, the Raging Tempest special edition ultra is under a dollar. And there's tons on the market. Well, two pages, not tons, two pages. But pretty much for the most part, all under a dollar for near mint. And I just think this is a really good card. I think fusion decks and fusion cards have always been kind of powerful when you come in and out of the game. And you never really know when Konami's gonna bust out some pretty sick fusion monsters. So I think this card will eventually find its way back in the meta, like most things. Uh, everything has its time and its place, so for under a dollar, I think this is a really good card to pick up and hold on to. Next one is going to be Levier the Sea Dragon. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is uh, multiple copies of this. Um, of course, everyone wants the Ultimate Rare First Edition. It's pretty pricey. It's about $16 right now. And after the $16 here, it goes up to $25. So it jumps up pretty quickly. There is other versions about this. I think this is such an under underrated card. This is this is probably like my top rank three XYZ in the whole game. This card is so powerful. And no one plays this card anymore. Um and it's just a really good old school card, you know, from Generation Force, the the core set that gave us the Dawn of the XYZs, it gave us the XYZ mechanics. Um there's the uh, Ultra First Editions as well, which look pretty nice. You know, if you don't want to drop big money on the Ultimates, about $4, you can get a First Edition in an Ultra, which is pretty good too. I'm just saying, I think this is a really powerful card, and kind of just no one is really paying attention to Levier. And this is still a really powerful card, so for $4, why not pick up a First Edition copy Ultra? Black Rose Dragon. Uh, tons of prints, of course. Ghost has always been ridiculously expensive. You know, got a nice condition, nice condition ultimate rare. It's pretty expensive. The secret rares. Uh, what I kind of want to focus on is like the the secret rare. I think the secret rares are like three. Back in the day, it used to be like ten dollars, like a long, 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 long time ago. When I originally got back into the game. But, uh, yeah, they're about three for the secrets. These look pretty nice. I mean, I would buy them for twos. I wouldn't buy these for threes. I would buy these for twos. When they get bumped down to twos, I would pick up some of these secrets from the Collector's 10, 2008. Really old school 10. But the secret rares look nice. But even more so right now, I think even cheaper, is the Dua Saga. The Dua Saga Ultra Rare Black Roses look pretty nice. Again, Dua Saga is kind of made and gone. There's not really, you can't really get it anymore. Um, and the foiling is really nice. And, you know, if you have any Dua Saga cards, I would just hold on to all your Dua Saga cards. There's only one set that had that foiling. And with this new set that's going to come out, Power Duelist or Duelist Power in April or whatever it's called, it's rumored to have the same foiling, which I hope it does. It'd be really cool to have, you know, another print run of this foiling because it looks so nice. But uh, Dual Saga is printed and gone. They're not making any more of that. So, I mean, I personally pulled all my stuff out and held it because as time has gone on, we've seen things like BLS and Effect Baylor and uh, even some of the hero stuff like go just skyrocket in prices just because there's not a lot of these on the market because not a lot of people um, have access to the set anymore. Um, but it's like $2. $2 for a first edition Dusa Black Rose. So uh, I think that's really cheap. For Black Rose. Black Rose is a really powerful card, really po po popular card as well. Um, next card, the Tyrant uh, the Tyrant Neptune. Specifically the print from the Shonen Jump magazines. Uh, there's one listing. There's one listing for about eight-ish, seven dollars. And then that's it. It's gone. It's completely bought out. So this card's currently banned, but if you have it, I would list it because you can essentially make the price because there's uh, no one has it listed. Uh, another thing I wanted to briefly go over was the Master Collection Volumes 1 binder and the Volumes 2. Not really the binders, they're kind of like impossible to get now, they're super expensive, one unsealed. But more specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Um, from volume one, the relinquish, secret relinquish. This is the highest rarity we have for relinquished in the TCG. Uh, super, super hard to get. Like, such an old set. I don't even remember. This is a really, 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 really old set. Um, surprisingly, there's a lot on the market for how old it is. And it's super cheap. All these are, like, under a dollar. Lolly played here, man. They're all under a dollar. I highly, highly recommend getting at least a play set of this. Um, I know we have Thousand Eyes off the list now, and it's really good too, but this is just a super nostalgic card, a really popular anime card from Pegasus, and this is the highest rarity that we have in the TCG for under a dollar. And it looks beautiful too, I have a place it myself personally, and the Secret Rare Falling looks really, like the old school Secret Rare Falling is really beautiful on this card. Um, and just the artwork in general is really badass. So, I, this is something to consider. I would definitely, for under a dollar, I would definitely pick up a playset of Secret Rare Relinquished from Master Collection Volume 1. Another thing I wanted to look at was Dark Necrofear. This was actually another card that I was actually part of my artwork collector's value market watch thing. This artwork is amazing. I love this. I mean, you can kind of tell by this video, like Condemn Witched and, um, the, the fairy card and, and dark necrofear now I kind of have a thing for kind of like dark themed kind of like spooky um, obscure kind of looking artwork for these female cards or artwork cards in general and dark necrofear just blows it out of the water I love this artwork the little creepy doll the alien thing the armor like everything just the this is super cool there's a lot of versions of dark necrofear <clears throat> Excuse me, but honestly, of course, if you can find a original Labyrinth of Nightmare uh, first edition original print, obviously that's going to be ideal. I'm pretty sure they're really expensive, kind of. Yeah, I mean they're like seven dollars. So seven dollars for original print first edition. Only the first edition. The first edition is the only one that's going to be worth anything. But it's like seven dollars. But you can get you know even a better rarity for cheaper. I mean it's pretty cool to have the original print. But I personally have invested, and I've been looking at, the DT and the Secret. Of course, the Secret Rare for Master Volume is like under a dollar, way under a dollar. This guy has 3 for 42, lightly played. Um, really old set, really beautiful falling, so Secret Rare. But then there's the also the Dual Terminal Rare, which uh, is kind of dwindling in numbers now. People have been buying it, I know I've been buying it, and it's under a dollar. Dollar here, under a dollar here, under a dollar here. This guy has Core TCG. I love this store, by the way. Buy from them. Core TCG is awesome. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just, I just really appreciate their business. They're an awesome shop. Um, ten. They have ten of them for fifty cents. So, I think this artwork is phenomenal. Again, I'm totally adding this to my collector's value um, artwork, whatever you want to call it, segment of cards. But this and the Secret Rare, the Dual Terminal 2 Rare and the Secret Rare from the Master Collection Volume 1 are my top picks for that card. Moving on to Master Collection Volume 2, of course we all know BLS Secret Rare, really beautiful foiling, is a money, $20. Um, Exodia Necross, a little bit of money too, but I want to specifically talk more about Breaker the Magical, Magical Word. Now, unfortunately, I kind of missed the ball on this. I only have, I think, two or three copies of this Secret Rare. This is the highest print rarity that we have in the TCG for Breaker of the Magic Warrior. The Breaker of the Magical Warrior. We have a new structure deck or star deck or whatever you want to call it coming out revolved around spellcasters and kind of all this good stuff here. So maybe Breaker will come back. Maybe we'll see some play. Maybe we'll see some upgraded stuff for Breaker, some support for Breaker. Who really knows? He definitely fits the bill for the new deck that's coming out. Um, again, unfortunately, I said that it's kind of I don't know if like the hype train has already started on this or what, because it's already the lowest pricing is like about five dollars. So I mean, at this price, I mean, forget it. I wouldn't really buy it at this price. Um, but if this ever goes down uh, to like around three or two dollars, you know, that's kind of my my area, two three dollars. I would definitely invest this card one because it's Master Collection Volume Two. It's ancient and you cannot get it anywhere, and it's the highest rarity. Breaker's a really popular card. He used to be, there's a lot of history to this card, a lot of nostalgia, and a lot of fan, fan favorite fluff that goes around this card. So 
that's one thing to consider. That's pretty much all I have to say today. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. It was a video by the White Mexican, and we'll see you all in the next video.